In the summer of 25, the eyes of the nation were focused on a small hamlet in East Tennessee. The city of Dayton was home to only 1,800 people, but it was a chosen battleground for the teaching of evolution in public schools. The whole trial lasted only a little over a week. Before, on July 21st, substitute biology teacher John Thomas Scopes was found guilty and fined $100. The Scopes trial was purportedly uh, 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 based on trying to keep any kind of thought that would con uh, be contrary to the biblical story and genesis of the creation of our species. The trial had been done on purpose. The American Civil Liberties Union wanted to challenge Tennessee's new law and went looking for a teacher willing to be its guinea pig. The 24-year-old Scopes would be their man. He was willing to be put on trial for having taught evolutionary theory. In fact, he couldn't even remember if he'd done it or not, but anyway, he allowed himself to be the subject of the uh, trial. Then the whole nation jumped in with both feet. The great commoner, William Jennings Bryan, let out a roar like a wounded bull elephant. From his semi-retirement in Florida, he screamed to the country that he would assist the Attorney General in the prosecution of the heretic Scopes. Having flung down the gauntlet, Brian smiled for the newsreels and sat down to prepare his brief. But Scopes was not to face the lions without help of his own. Two famous attorneys of the day, Dudley Field Malone and Clarence Darrow, accepted Brian's challenge and hastened to Dayton to lock horns with a silver-tongued orator. Most of the spectators traveled to Dayton just to watch the debate play out. The issue was no longer the innocence or guilt of Scopes, but rather the final death struggle between two basic human philosophies, fundamentalism versus modernism. Brian used an emotional appeal for the sanctity of gospel and the scriptures. Darrow, on the other hand, argued that if today you make evolutionary teaching a crime, tomorrow you may ban books and newspapers. But the verdict was all but assured once Judge John Ralston refused to allow any testimony validating evolution. After the guilty verdict was read, Scopes delivered his only testimony of the trial, declaring he would oppose the law in any way he could. <laughs> 